Fuller, Gaines, Galjoni, Hall, Hancock, Hernandez, Hertzberg, Hill, Hueso, Huff, Jackson, Lada, Leno, Leva, Lou, McGuire, Mendoza, Mitchell, Monning, Morlock, Morell, Wynn, Nelson, Pan, Pavley, Roth, Runner, Stone, Vidak, Wykowski, Wolk. The Secretary notices that there is an absence of a quorum. Members, if you could please come to the Senate floor.
Allen, Anderson, Bates, Bell, Berryhill, Block, Canella, De Leon, Fuller, Gaines, Galjani, Hall, Hancock, Hernandez, Hertzberg, Hill, Hueso, Huff, Jackson, Lada, Leno, Leva, Lou, McGuire, Mendoza, Mitchell, Monning, Morlock, Morell, Wynn, Nilsson, Pan, Pavley, Roth, Runner, Stone, Vidak, Wykowski, Wolf. Our quorum is present. Good afternoon. Would the members and our guests beyond the rail and the gallery please, please rise? We will be led in prayer this afternoon by our guest chaplain, Linda Kelly Baker, pastor of the Newcastle United Methodist Church, after which we will remain standing. We will be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Senator Morlock. As we enter into a time of prayer, I invite you first to center yourselves by taking a few long, deep breaths. O oh, Divine Spirit, breath of life, we gather in this place, in this body, to do your work, and in that, serve your people. Before we engage in the consuming business of the afternoon and into the week, it is good to pause and breathe and remember why we are here. We come from many different places, leaving loved ones behind. Some of us carry heavy burdens and personal concerns. Help us to trust in your care of these situations left at home that we may be fully present here. Inspire us with your wisdom, guide us with your grace, and when tensions rise, calm us with your spirit. Help us to listen deeply to you and to others, and bless us this day. Amen. Colleagues and guests, please put your hand over your heart and repeat with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. Members, um, moving to privileges of the floor. Senator Stone. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, for purposes of introduction. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, fellow colleagues. Um, many of us came from, from cities where we had such programs as sister city organizations that um, developed relations with uh, our school districts, our city councils, our boards of supervisors, with other counties, city school districts throughout the country. And as a result of these programs, um, long-lasting friendships can occur. And I'm very proud uh, to say that over the last weekend, uh, actually yesterday, uh, my daughter, Brittany, uh, graduated from the Southwestern School of Law. Wonderful. And one of the guests that came was a friend that I've known for 46 years. I met this individual when I was 13 years old as an exchange student in Mexico. So would you please join me in welcoming my dear friend who flew all the way from Mexico City to witness my daughter's graduation. He's been there for happy occasions in our family, weddings, he's been there for funerals. He's a member of our family. Please welcome my friend Ugo Karasawa to the State Senate. Ugo. Welcome, Ugo. And Senator Stone, congratulations to you and your daughter. Privileges of the floor. Senator yes, Senator Bell. At Senator De Leon's desk. Mr. Uh, President, members, 
Uh, please help me welcome um, Emma, Emma, Emma Speakerman, Jonathan Carrer, and with Directing Change, and Amanda Lipp, representing NAMI. Uh, I'm presenting them with a Senate resolution in honor of Mental Health Matters Month. One in four people need help with a mental health challenge. Half of all people with mental illness show symptoms by age 14, and nearly three quarters by age 24. Mental health challenges take many forms, including depression and anxiety. Challenges can also lead to substance abuse, and that can affect schoolwork, social opportunities, and, and their future. But with support and treatment, between 70 and 90% of the people diagnosed with mental illness have a significant reduction in symptoms and improved quality of life. Tomorrow, California's Mental Health Services Authority will celebrate Mental Health Matters Day by hosting their direct, Directing Change program and film contest. Uh, Cal Mesa's 25 plus programs work together to prevent suicide reduce stigma and discrimination relating to mental health challenges and promote the mental health wellness of students statewide. Now I have lime green ribbons, the same color as my tie. I don't think you've noticed my tie. <laughs> well, That's beautiful. Uh, the lime green uh, ribbons were for all of you to wear uh, tomorrow in honor of that day. So. On behalf of the State Senate, I'd like to present this resolution uh, to the, the people indicated. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. President and members of the Senate. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Senator Bell. Thank you, Senator Bell, and your continued effort for mental health awareness in California. All right, privileges of the floor. Senator Pan. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Uh, I would like to ask for unanimous consent to take up item number 49, SCR 55, regarding Lock, California. Without objection. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, members, for allowing me to Mr. take Secretary, up. Mr. Secretary, excuse me. Oh, Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Concurrent Resolution 55 by Senator Pan relative to the centennial of the founding of Locke, California. Senator thank Pan, you may continue. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, members, uh, thank you for allowing me to take up SCR 55. It is an honor to be able to celebrate the centennial anniversary of Locke here in the Senate chambers. I would also like to thank uh, Senator Wolk for her help. There you go. Uh, and also uh, the support and support on this resolution, as well as Assemblymember uh, Jim Frazier, who will be added as a co-author in the Assembly. Now, Locke, California was founded in 1915, and this year marks its 100th anniversary. And this is a unique um, city here in California, and it's unique because it's the only Chinatown in the United States. Um, all of the other Chinatowns we're familiar with are part of another city. And in order to preserve its charm, the Sacramento County Historical Society added Locke to the Registry of National Historic Places. So we're proud to celebrate this important milestone. And here to celebrate this are members of the Locke Foundation. Uh, we have Honey Lum, uh, Daryl Wu, Eileen Long, Stuart Walt Hall, and James Motlow. Please welcome. give them a warm welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Senator Wolk. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I'm very pleased to join Senator Penn in recognizing uh, the town of Locke, which is in my district, and it is in the Delta. And for those of you that haven't been there, it's about 20 minutes south of here, and I encourage you to come to the Delta and to see the town of Locke. It really is a very unique, historic, and living uh, town. They made tremendous contributions, the residents, the early residents of Locke, to uh, the building of the railroads, and more important, the building of agriculture. Uh, they were um, instrumental in the levees and in constructing the levees, and most of those levees are in pretty good condition, even considering how, how old they are, and even considering the, the uh, load that, they're, that they have to um, carry. Uh, the foundation is doing a terrific job uh, in educating uh, people about history uh, and about their current um, reality of the Delta. So I'm very pleased to join with Senator Pan in acknowledging their 100 years. Thank you, Senator Wolk. What a great opportunity for the celebration. Any other privileges of the floor? Senator Pan, I believe you have a resolution. A resolution? Okay. Any other further discussion or debate? Seeing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the vote. Allen? Aye. Aye. Anderson? Aye. Aye. Bates? Aye. Aye. Bell? Aye. Aye. Berryhill? Block? Aye. Aye. Canella? Aye. Aye. De Leon? Fuller? I Gaines. I. I Galjoni. I Hall. Hancock. I Hernandez. I Hertzberg. I Hill. I Hueso. I Huff. I Jackson. I Lada. I Leno. I Leva. I Lou. I McGuire. I Mendoza. I Mitchell. I Monning. I Morlock. I Morrell. I win. I Nielsen. I Pan. I Pavley. Roth. I Runner. I Stone. I Vidak. Warkowski. I. Wolk. Wolk. I. Vidak. I. Please call the roll for absentees. Barry Hill. De Leon. Paul Pavlik. Thirty-five I, no zero. The resolution is adopted. Members, uh, moving on to messages from the governor will be deemed read. Messages from the assembly will be re de de read. Uh, reports of committee will be deemed read and amendments adopted. Motions, resolutions, and notices. Floor amendment motion. There are floor amendments at the desk. They will be deemed adopted. Motions, resolutions, and notices. Returning to privileges of the floor, Senator De Leon. Would like to come first. Stone. Senator Stone. I'm sorry, Mr. President, for the prior uh, category, if you mind. Uh, at the request of the author, Motion. could we please remove file number 97, ACR 15, by Assembly Member Levine from the special consent file for purposes of amendments? The desk will note. Thank, Thank you. you. Returning the privileges of the floor, Senator De Leon. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, by the way, you look uh, very good up there presiding over the <laughs> dais. I want to welcome you uh, as uh, one of our 
uh, fellow presiding officers today. Uh, colleagues, uh, I am very pleased to introduce a very prestigious guest to our chamber this afternoon. The Honorable Glenn Murray, the Minister of the Environment and Climate Change of the Province of Ontario, Canada, is visiting to discuss cap and trade regulations. Since ministers in Canada are also legislators, Minister Murray is responsible for the province's climate program and his constituents in the centre of Toronto. Under previous governments, he was the Minister of Infrastructure and Transportation, the Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities, and the Minister of Research and Innova uh, Innovation. Prior to being elected to the Ontario Legislature, Minister Murray served uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, first as a council member, then as a mayor. As you know, California cooperates with Quebec and British Columbia on cap and trade issues through the Western Climate Initiative. Ontario collaborated with the initiative starting back in 2007, but couldn't move ahead due to a backlash from the closure of Ontario's remaining coal-fired plants. Nonetheless, it was able to, they were able to resolve the situation in a manner that was business-friendly. Although Ontario has been unable to provide funding to the Western Climate Initiative, they've stayed very involved in the development of infrastructure, such as the tracking and auction systems used by California and Quebec. On April 13th, the newly elected government on Ontario, led by Premier Kathleen Wynne, announced it will adapt a cap-and-trade system. Minister Murray is tasked with its implementation, therefore linking Quebec, Ontario, with the California market. We look forward to working with him and the Ontario government in their renewed efforts. Colleagues, Mr. President, please join me in extending a very warm introduction, or in, I should say welcome to Mr. Minister Murray. Great. Thank you very much. I, I will be very brief, Senators. Thank you very much. Ontario has great admiration for the, uh, the great Republic of California, its great democracy and its people. Uh, we're extraordinarily thankful for you for your leadership on climate change and the economy. Ontario is home to five of North America's largest banks the largest auto manufacturing jurisdiction within the United States and Canada, and, the, and one of the largest mining districts, and you're the number one in agriculture with the third largest food producer, which got our attention in climate change when we had an 80% apple failure. And this year, when we went to buy our California produce, it said they weren't available for the first time in my lifetime. We see this, as a, we see this not as a carbon pricing exercise, but a, a need to reach carbon productivity, because the way you get your greenhouse gas under emissions is to improve your economic productivity and your carbon productivity, and we share that. But on behalf of Premier Wynne, thank you very much. You're a remarkable friend, and we're, we're lucky to have you as neighbors. God bless and keep you all safe, and God bless the United States. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Murray. Members, consideration of the daily file. Secretary, please read. Governor's appointments. Item number one. Senator De Leon, item number one. Passed temporarily. We'll move to Senate third reading. Secretary, please read. Item eight, Senator Bell. Pass. Item number nine, Senator Pan. Secretary, please read. 